Okay, I wanted to show you this new door that I am going to be working on. I am going to incorporate some of the things I've been learning. I do enjoy making books and sort of the junk journal ideas with the embossing powders and some of the distress inks and stuff and that type of almost watercolor type of melding of colors together. And I wanted to do that actually on wood. And so I found this unique piece. This is actually one of my small butterfly doors, but this beautiful piece of twisted wood fit on there. So I am going to paint this up with some metallic bronze and gold and black. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to incorporate this sort of plain wood in with that, but that's the plan. It's my new plan. And I'm going to show you how I do it right here. Okay, here it is with all of the painting I did. And I was trying to think with this thinner wood how I would attach a doorknob when this extra piece of decorative wood is so thick. So I thought of a lot of different things, but I have this really small stiff piece of wire it's also in a metallic. This is more copper. So I'm going to drill two tiny holes here and put this through as kind of a loop doorknob. But uh, I thought that the decorative wood needed a bit more depth. And I was thinking more black, but since I'm going to use this sort of copper colored doorknob wire, I thought why not add some copper colored paint to my darker pieces. So I'm going to add some more black, but also some copper and hopefully add this wire doorknob as well. So I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. Okay, here is the door with the added copper color and the doorknob put on. What I'm going to do is flatten this out on my little anvil a little bit and add epoxy here as well as over the entire 
top of this wire and along these holes. So I'm going to do that and then we'll work on the background color. Okay, I truly hope all the leaf blowers have stopped outside, but if not, we're gonna carry on anyway. So I tried a bunch of different things on wood. This was wood stain and I'm trying to get kind of a watercolor effect where the colors blend and sort of bleed together. And this did not look good to me. I did add some of the copper acrylic paint over that. Anyway, it looked too orangey, too red, not blendy. I didn't like it. So I tried very watered down acrylic. And you can see that this really blended nicely. And it kind of shows I used, I used these two colors together which gave me this. It's kind of dry now, but it gave me, this one by itself was too dark. So I added some light kind of a butter yellow to it. And this gave a nice color. And so I blended that with this darker brown and then highlighted just a little bit with gold into the light area. So we're gonna try it. I have no idea how it's gonna come out, but if it goes wrong, Always have a plan, especially with wood, and you've already put this much work into it. If it all goes bad, I'll sand it down and put a dark stain. You can always go darker. So that's the plan. Hopefully it works. I would like to get, I put a little bit, maybe you can see, of brown. I would like a darker tone around the edges. And I did not do the acrylic yet onto this door handle like I said I was going to do because I thought that the paint should go on first so that the color can show through the epoxy. So I'm going to do this and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I just wanted to kind of show how this looks right now. I like these little blobs of yellow here, so I'm gonna go ahead and really use some watery yellow to kind of highlight those areas like that and let those kind of bleed a little bit. I liked how that looked. Here comes the leaf blowers again. Oh my goodness, we're just gonna have to put up with it. Because now it's all wet the way I want it. And I like this sort of runny look. And I wanted all of these colors to kind of blend together, just like they're doing the bottom here. We can just add some color. I wanted a bit of extra color here. See, now that it's wet, it's kind of swelled, so it's sticking there. It's wood. I mean, your front door gets stuck, right? So wood will expand and contract as you add water or heat. Um, sometimes it sticks more when it's more dry and sometimes it sticks more when it's wet. It's, it's wood, it, it does its own thing. All right, I think we can add some gold to this now and really kind of finish at least this front side. I like that little blob of light there. Almost shattered kind of looking. I love that. That looks super cool. I almost want to rub it a little bit. Yeah, I like that. That's kind of the effect I wanted. So 
Now we're going to add a bit of gold that's going to give a bit more highlight oopsie, to these light areas, just like we did on the um, twisted piece of wood that is the decorative part. I want to really bring out a bit of that sort of gold in order to highlight. See there? Now, I think we've got some really nice contrast and color. I'm gonna add a little more to that bit of dark up there and let that kind of run. Oh, perfect. I, I like that a lot. We'll see what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, so here is the door with the paint all applied and dried. I went ahead and did the back exactly the same as I did the front. And I also, on these darker points here, I added actually um, a little bit of depth. So I took either a ball or a nail, depending on the place, and added actually a little indentation on that so that they look like knots. And then I did go ahead after that was all dry and epoxy the door handle to the wood so that that would be smooth. And what I'm going to do is also, I took another wire like this front one and I will apply that to the back. Usually I use a sawtooth hanger, but I think this is a little bit heavy with this thin of wood. So I'm going to go ahead and do just a, a wire hanger that will kind of peak above just a little bit. Maybe I'll shorten that and make it go like around here. But um, I think that the paint really came out nicely. I hope that you can see how well it came out. And now it's time to varnish. Now I will do a video later on about how I apply my varnish. I will get the can here and show you. This is the varnish that I use on all of my exterior doors. It's oil-based, it's very messy, it's smelly. So I will have to get set up to do a tutorial on that for you. But it protects the wood very well. Keep in mind with all wood products, they have to not only be sealed, but they need a maintenance program. So I always ship directions on how to maintain your fairy door if you purchase one from me. But if you have a fairy door of your own that you make, be sure that you clean the wood piece at least once a year with a toothbrush and make sure there's no debris or mold and clean it with either a very mild soap or bleach solution and then let it dry indoors for at least a few weeks to make sure it's completely dry and then you'll have to varnish it and that varnish will have to dry completely, usually for, again, about two weeks before you put it back outside. So keep that in mind. Wood is meant to deteriorate, and so if you want yours to not deteriorate, you will have to maintain it and keep it on that maintenance program. Otherwise, your wood will decay. So I am going to varnish this, and then I'll show you the completed door when it's all finished. And here it is, all finished. I'm totally pleased with how the painting came out with the highlights and sort of the artificial knots in the wood and the colors just matched perfectly. The handle is functional and smooth on the back. The epoxy made the wires more smooth to the whole surface. So totally pleased I'll put some pictures here on the end. Hope you can make your own.